The etiology of uh, adult uh, degenerative scoliosis is untreated adolescent diabetic scoliosis, as you can see here in the example, or the novel from degenerative uh, disease, as you can see this example here, a 42-year female with a level of disc degeneration and how this progressed over the years. Less commonly, it's failed operative treatment, congenital deformities, severe osteoporosis, post-traumatic or paralytic. Uh, is decompression surgery alone a good option in adults with spine deformity and adult scoliosis? Uh, adult spine deformity, in my opinion, and based on what I was taught and instructed here, uh, is best applied when you use time-tested clinical approaches that are supported in the literature. I encourage skepticism, and I would caution strongly against shortcuts. Because adult scoliosis is such a mixed diagnosis. We're not... It's not as simple as uh, saying that someone has spinal stenosis at a fixed point in the spine. This is really a, um, a complex um, diagnosis that can involve many different uh, variables. And so it's important first to define to ourselves what's going on with the patient. In other words, talking about balance in the coronal and sagittal plane, talking about locations of nerve impingement, talking about instabilities within the curve, talking about the level of the pelvis, leg lengths, et cetera, before we just define uh, patients and treat them as if they're the same uh, uh, patient. So I want to focus on just the surgical treatment. And so we are considering the uh, long fusion or short fusion, anterior posterior or posterior only instrumentation of fusion. Anterior posterior is, is using long thoracic abdominal approach or X3 plus paramedian approach and place the cage anterior side and no instrumentation and the posterior instrumentation fusion. And the posterior approach is doing all posterior and the interbody L45 or L5S on area through the T-lip or a plip. And uh, if we need osteotomy, we may use the ponty or pedicle subtraction. Again, a little go back a little bit to what all of you have talked about is where do you stop? Because you know, there's pathology up and down the whole spine. I mean, you can end up with that last patient you just showed, infusing from the occiput to the sacrum. And so, where 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 do you uh, where do you stop? And number one, and number two, how often is the junctional thing a problem and every five years you're just moving your fusion up the, up the spine? Uh, to answer your first question, the decision on to stop a fusion, you have to look at what the neighbor looks like. So if you're thinking of stopping at the thoracolumbar junction, which I would have preferred to do in all those cases I showed because it limits the amount of blood loss, uh, much less time in surgery, so less chance for complications.